so I think I've worked with five, maybe six psychologists, two um, psychiatrists, so six total, four sports psychologists, and two psychiatrists. When I first spoke to my most recent sports psychologist, the first conversation was probably pretty dark and a lot of tears. And um, I remember him telling me that there's three stages to basically, you know, killing yourself, like suicide. Um, and the first stage is that you make this kind of internal decision that you, you know, you don't want to basically be alive anymore. Um, stage two is you start to think about different ways, perhaps that, you know, you might decide to end your life. And stage three is that you, you plan when, like a date, perhaps a time, um, and you, you start to go about arranging life, perhaps, or not, and um, maybe your affairs, maybe, you know, you leave notes, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, and so for... <laughs> And so for a lot of my life, I've kind of lived, <sighs> there's been a lot of periods in my life that I've lived in that, like stage one. There's only a few times I've got to, you know, stage two. I find life, you know, I just find life quite hard. Like my, my brain, it just, it just doesn't always cooperate. And it complicates things and has all these ideas. You know, I, I went to Heathrow Airport last week and I have a flight booked to Barcelona at, I think, 8 p.m., 7 p.m. I have a flight to Belfast at 9 p.m. I change the flight to Belfast instead of 9 p.m. to 6 p.m. I end up, that flight gets delayed and my brain wants to change the Belfast flight to back to the Barcelona one. And it's like sometimes I just don't know what day it is, you know? And I don't mean literally, I just mean it's a bit chaotic. And then you struggle with, like, happiness. And that's, like, that's just, like, that's what, like, depression is and mental health struggles, you know? It's a, in war, there's a, you know, you, you, a country starts a war, look at, you know, Ukraine right now. And it's, like, it, it's ongoing, it doesn't, it's not really like a 45 minutes of your day and you know, you call it a day. Like war and, and life is this, it's just a ongoing, you know, not struggle, but just ongoing. Everybody's dealing with whatever shit it is that they bring to the table and my mental health and happiness has gone through, I guess, all different stages. And that's, you know, anything from where's your happiness in a scale of one to 10, you know, and <laughs> 0 0.5 to, you know, 15 out of 10. I'm a very emotional person. Even though I'm really hard on myself, I, I, there's a lot of moments in life I, I can be a little bit soft but what's kind of crazy is that how proud how proud a life moment for me you know racing great north against probably a 10 percent chance of it going well psychologically fucking physiologically like i've talked about fitness fatigue from training i'm like I'm proud as punch, you could say, 
when I ran 6108 for the half marathon, what's that, over nine minutes quicker? It was, it was easy. It didn't, it, that's not the reason I run, you know? It was easy because for once in my life, I, I followed a plan, you know? I, I, stuck to, I stuck to the task, I lived up the mountain, I didn't distract myself, I wasn't all over the place, I wasn't, you know, eating like shit, I was looking after my recovery, I was doing the strength and conditioning. So I was stronger, I was fitter, my headspace was in a better place, I tapered properly. I woke up the day of the race, I leaned over to put my, you know, running shoes on and there was no pain, nothing hurt. It was like, whoa. Psychologically, I was a demon. I just knew, you know, I'd talked about it all week. I'm going to break the Northern Iron record. Uh, if I don't break 62, all this chat, this last few days, I, geez, I didn't know if I'd run... I was so unsure of myself. It's not the last few days I looked. It's almost like the last month. A lot of uncertainty. There's a, I did a session a month ago, eight by a mile on a track. Brilliant, you know? Life was all sunshine and rainbows and it's nobody's fault. For that matter, it's not, it's not even my fault. Um, life is just peaks and valleys, you know? And so, when I was a kid, I used to sit in a dark room and life wasn't going well and I just, it's like I'd fall asleep. I just wanted everything to stop. It felt dark, it felt sad, really emotional, really angry. It's why I'm bald. I'd rip my own hair out of my hands. I'm not joking. I'd fight all the time. And, and by all accounts, physically, I was tough, you know? Um, which is going to make me sound bad, but I was just a, a little psychopath, you know? <laughs> so physical pain <laughs> and that kind of stuff didn't scare me. I just, that didn't hurt me. People couldn't hurt me. I, I could get in fights with four or five people. They'd have bottles. Didn't phase me. But that's not... That's not real life toughness. Real life toughness is this last month, you know, I, I found life really tough. And I've just made myself really busy. Doing all sorts, you know, just a lot. But toughness is sitting down in a dark room, you know, by yourself, just with your thoughts. What's going on, kid? Where are you at? What's making you sad? And then you, you one day at a time, one moment at a time, one second at a time, you know, rebuild. And I think I, I don't know what I watched on YouTube the other day, but it, it was like a Buddhist monk, you know, saying to, to move forward. And, you know, a, a part of yourself, a part of your history, it has to die. There's parts of me you probably need to, you know, bugger off. And it's not, that's not linked to running. I don't give a shit that I ran 70 minutes for a half marathon. I, I don't care that it's nine minutes slower than I've ever ran. If you haven't understood by now, like this channel running, it, it's not about being faster doesn't fucking mean anything. Nothing, nothing is different this morning than the day after I ran 6108. It, <laughs> it's not different. Nothing changes. Your why has to be different. It, it, it can't be because you want to be faster. Faster doesn't fucking mean anything. Sometimes it just has to be that you want to show yourself you can, you can do hard things, you know? And running's tough, it's really tough. Sometimes it's maybe you just want to overcome areas in life that maybe hold you back in running, but it's actually more about life and than it is about sport and, and running. But I came here to just put myself in a situation that I knew I'd find uncomfortable. I don't have to run, you know. I, I... But running's being an anchor in life to really help and support me through some difficult times. And I'll always deal with that. 
like there'll always be mental health problems there'll always be you know mental health struggles and I'm so fortunate to have help you know and and that's psychologists psychiatrists family you know friends even though I do isolate myself and the signs that Steven Scullion is depressed or having mental health issues is training a bit erratic, you know, not socializing, self-isolation. And that has been so clear for like a month now. Um, but, you know, Great North Run wasn't looking after my business, wasn't doing my gym, so I'm weak, wasn't being disciplined in life. So psychologically, there was weakness. It was hot. I'll not lie, I don't love the heat. Um, I got the eight miles around 40 minutes maybe, which wasn't bad by all accounts, but I just, from the gun, just didn't feel, when, you, when you're struggling a bit psychologically and maybe for a month you've exhausted yourself, you, there's just no spring in your legs, you know, there's no, there's no so you can train okay, and, and by all accounts, because there's recovery and there's moments to get your psychology back together and, and because it's easier and it's by yourself or maybe with a group that you're familiar with and comfortable with, you can sort of fake it, like everything's okay. But then you put yourself in a different environment like Great North and you're exposed. But I, I think that's important. I think that's important to deal with the consequences of your, your choices. You know, this is all about choices. And so... I started the video with like, and I'm laughing about it and smiling, it's like I'm bloody bipolar. But I started the video with, you know, this suicide chat, and, and I'm not, um, not right now. It doesn't mean I won't be in future. It doesn't mean I won't be. There's different stages, and I'm lucky um, that I've never been at like stage three. I, I've probably kind of been at stage two at times, and there's certainly been a lot of moments I've had my hands in my head, and I, I, I I can't see life going on in that way, you know, I can't see myself wanting to continue life, feeling certain ways, having emotions, talking to me like they were, and and it's torment, you know, it's self-abuse internally, it's, it's difficult. So I'm okay. <laughs> Great North was actually a process of moving forward because I knew by facing those consequences and maybe struggling and not feeling good on the day, that it would push me to start, you know, one day at a time, rebuilding. Um, I, I haven't been looking after myself. I haven't been taking care of, you know, my business from a professional running perspective. That You know, the little things, the nutrition, the recovery, the strength stuff, the psychology stuff, it all needs to come back. But I think starting one day at a time, I'll start journaling again, meditating and, and putting in the work to help myself and, and work with the professionals that I work with and then training just needs to be better you know I, I need to probably go back to what I was doing in 2020 that you know seemed to really help I, I'm curious to maybe why it helped the most is is likely because I was doing this hard training that helped me overcome stress anxiety all this stuff like stress and anxiety can hinder your breathing, hinder how you move, it's, it's huge. And so maybe that hard training didn't always make sense, lactate and physiologically and all this shit, but it probably helped me with stress and confidence and anxiety way more than I've ever known. Um, I think from now on, I'm going to have a daily, um, and you should do this, you know, if you struggle a bit psychologically, you should have a daily question you write down and it's you know who who won the war today you know and a war is this ongoing and who won the war is you know did the logical brain win the war did we meditate did we journal you know did we do something tough to show ourselves we can were we disciplined you know how did the day go and at the start of the day you can say who's going to win the war today and then at the end of the day you can ask yourself who won the war and if you start stacking more days together that you know, the logical side of you, that it wins the war, well, that's what leads to a better life and, and probably faster race results. But if the, you know, the, the emotional, the, you know, the reckless, the, you know, self-abusive, you know, the poor disciplined, 
if that emotional part of you keeps winning the war, behaving in a way that you, you know you didn't plan to, you didn't want to, well, yeah, you're, you're probably going to struggle in life. And so we're in control. It, it's, it can be difficult. But I think if you learn to be very disciplined, life can become quite simple. And I've allowed a lot of poor discipline to slip in, sessions when I shouldn't have done them. I go on Thursday morning, I do a pre-race session, two mile tempo, one mile a bit faster, small, small session, get it done. Then I'd build a fence all day with my parents, that was probably the first, loved it, great fun, shouldn't be doing it two days before a race. So I build a fence all morning, all day, sorry, and that's, my dad and my mum did carry me, they did do a lot of the work, but I finished that about 8 p.m., 7.30 p.m., and then I go and do three times 7K at marathon effort. Like, what the fuck am I doing? I do that, probably because I'm nervous as shit about the race in two days' time and I'm trying to work my way out of it. And, and I show up on Sunday, I'm exhausted, I'm tired, you know, like yesterday, the race day. Too many poor disciplined moves in life, not just running, and it just holds you back. One really positive from the race, got there about three, four miles to go, and I was in a bad place, just hurting, didn't know if I'd make to the finish line. And I just went, kid, just set yourself free, you know? There's this, I can feel this like stranglehold on me, on my chest, and I'm, I can't get my body temperature down, and I'm, and it's like I just went, fuck it, you know, just set yourself free, and, and it all just stopped, there was no grabbing, there was no, I just went, what does it matter, you walk to the finish, you jog, it doesn't matter, you know. But I knew I wanted to finish. I didn't know if I could. I was really struggling to get up some of those hills. But I don't know. It, it felt good at least to finish. Um, and it felt like a nice moment to then I could draw a line through everything that's gone on. And I don't know that it's the last month. It could be the last year. Mental health and struggles like that, they don't creep up on you like instantly. They just wear you down a little bit. But that's about all I got for you. <laughs> I hope that's the last emotional episode I do. Um, and yeah, I hope it helps somebody out there. But, you know, one day at a time, you know, who won the war today? <laughs>